Next on the agenda is an update from Dale Brown on the 2013 wildfire communication. Good afternoon. Well, we're not quite as big as all the radio agencies you just heard in terms of uh, hundreds of thousands or thousands of radios, or in terms of hundreds and uh, not even hundreds. But uh, well, um, my name is Dale Brown. I'm with the Arizona State Forestry Division. Uh, communications. I've been running the communications program for over 25 years in the state. And we've, uh, we're a cabinet level agency uh, in the governor's office. Uh, uh, and we're formerly known as State Fire or State Lands. We're associated with the Arizona State Land Department. So um, we've had some terminology. We've had some uh, uh, <laughs> names uh, over the past couple of years. But we are Arizona State Forestry, and we fight fires. We fight well in fires. As a matter of fact, we have um, our protection responsibilities over 22 million acres of uh, state and unincorporated private lands in the state of Arizona. One of the things we do is that we, we train, equip, organize uh, firefighting uh, resources, including uh, coordination of, um, of uh, uh, while in uh, inmate firefighting crews, kind of like hot shot crews. Um, and we distribute a lot of uh, federal excess uh, property. A lot of the fire departments in Arizona actually originally got started by virtue of uh, working through Arizona State Forestry and getting the funding up front uh, years and years ago and getting um, federal excess equipment, uh, fire fighting uh, uh, engines, uh, ladders, uh, pumps, that kind of thing. Um, we also have distributed over $6 million over the last uh, 15 years in federal uh, monies that uh, that were um, allowed to distribute and within the last five years, a lot of that's gone to special radio projects. Um, we've actually, you know, helped departments buy and purchase uh, P25 radios, neuroband radios, that kind of thing. Um, the other, some of the other programs that we manage, uh, including um, projects to uh, to reduce wildfire risk around your communities and homes. Uh, is we manage the uh, statewide aviation program, and uh, we do a lot of training and uh, uh, coordinating with the uh, Arizona Department of Public Safety and Arizona National Guard as far as uh, aviation assets are concerned. Of course, we do that through our radio system. Our radio system is pretty, or pretty simple. It's a VHF radio system. We don't have a lot of mountaintop radio sites, but we have, they have what we do have are strategically replaced, located throughout the state of Arizona. There's a lot of bare areas in the northeastern part of the state, that's uh, Indian reservations. Um, and then, of course, the military um, reservations down in the south, the far southwest in the corner of the state. Uh, like I said, we don't have a large expanse of radio system, but what we do, it works and it works great for us, but we can't do it by ourselves. Uh, we, um, we have uh, two, two networks. One of them is just for fire, uh, firefighting and coordinating firefighting assets and resources. The other one is for uh, statewide flight following, so that's something that we do. With the amount of aviation resources that we use, uh, we've got to track and coordinate those. And they don't, they're not usually typically on, they don't file a FAA flight plan because we're in special use category. We, we directly control them and we do that through the radio systems. So a little bit different than commercial aircraft. And we fly a lot lower. Um, so we have a, a statewide interagency wildland dispatch and coordination center. Um, it was uh, up until last year, uh, other federal wildland agency partners were involved, and they pulled out to go into their own centers. They have them in, uh, <laughs> they, uh, uh, anyway, they pulled out and they moved into um, five centers, uh, five or six centers uh, statewide, and we're in the process of getting into those zones and so that we can become truly interagency. But of course, we can't do that without the uh, Arizona Department of Public Safety's microwave backbone. Uh, that's what put, ties everything together. Without that, we're, we're pretty much lost. <laughs> the fire season, uh, you know, what can I say? It's, uh, <laughs> it's hot and dry. Nothing's changed. The only thing different is that this year, we've got a little bit of a, of a moisture band going across the southern half of the central part of Arizona from about where Apache Junction starts, or Globe, all the way stretched all the way through to Kingman. And that area experienced, experienced um, a lot uh, a lot more rainfall at the right time, like a, about two months ago. So it allowed the grasses to 
to, to cure and to uh, actually to green up. And now, as you see, everything's in bloom in the desert. So uh, that is usually indicative of a pretty good fire season for us. So we're going to be we're going to be busy. <laughs> There's no doubt about it. So uh, because while Empire does not distinguish between uh, boundaries, uh, kind of like the, uh, the Texas DPS uh, radio uh, map that follows the boundary, that's pretty cool. If we get wildland fires to do that, then we probably have it made. But um, uh, so we don't do that. And in turn, you know, some of our vehicles look like this. <laughs> Is that our answer to operability? Well, <laughs> not really. But uh, I'm sure some of you have seen that picture before. <laughs> but it, it, it could get that bad. But we do, the reason I bring this up is because we do uh, operate, we do uh, a lot of interagency coordination, and we can't fight fires alone. So we do that with the rest of our wildland interagency partners. Federal partners are a big uh, component in Arizona, but 90% of our resources come from fire districts, fire departments within Arizona. So as, as the process with um, exchanging uh, equipment with these local rural volunteer fire departments, they sign an agreement with us that says, hey, you know, if you give us this equipment, we'll go out and we'll help you, you know, battle wildland fires and, uh, outside of their district boundaries and things like that. Um, so we have a, uh, a lot of uh, interagency uh, partners in Arizona. As you can see, the, uh, the land ownership in Arizona is quite diverse. Um, there's, there's other states where state forestry assets and state forestry controls the majority of the fire, fires and they have the majority of the fires. In Arizona, there's a mixture of federal, private, fire department, and state assets uh, that, that come together to help fight everybody's fires. So we're kind of a big interagency community when it comes to wildland fire fighting. Um, uh, so how do we fight fires? Uh, how do we communicate with, them, with each other? We actually, if we go back, we go back to that slide. You can see a picture of everybody's uh, radio is there, and that's pretty much what we do: <laughs> is we utilize everybody's existing radio uh, system. Uh, the Forest Service, if we have a fire on the Forest Service, they'll ask us to come and play uh, play with them, and we'll um, utilize their radio system to work that fire. Just like the BLM, the Bureau of Land Management, they have their own radio system. The Bureau of Indian Affairs has their own radio system. Everybody has their own radio system. So we, when we get um, invited to, uh, to uh, when we respond to uh, uh, fires, they're pretty much interagency in nature. So we, we utilize wherever the land ownership jurisdiction is, we utilize their radio system, along with tactical and, and uh, other assets that uh, we'll go into a little bit here. Um, but one of the most important things is uh, for us is programming everybody's radio frequencies into our radios. So we have uh, multi-channel, multi-group VHF radios, and most of wildland players are VHF. So we got kind of an easy job. <laughs> it's not bad, but you know there are obviously there's some challenges that in, in the future years for us. But what we have done in the last year is we've documented all those interagency frequencies on ICS 217As. And I don't know if everybody's familiar with those, but uh, that's the, actually our, our, our Bible, you might say. Uh, that's a quick reference um, so that when we program radios, um, we can just go to these IC, ICS 217s. The frequencies are already authorized. We have set up uh, requests for authorizations for all of these. And, and that book is pretty tremendous right now. It's a, about 47 pages of ICS 217s just for the federal uh, and local or excuse me, the federal and the state ownership between Arizona and New Mexico. That doesn't include any fire department frequencies. That would be about another five or six books. <laughs> so uh, coordinated frequencies is, is, is uh, essential to us, making sure we have the right frequency. And it seems like it's an ever-changing, you know, you, you, once you finish an ICS, ICS 217A and you got that agency's frequencies, uh, Two months later, somebody's going to change that. So it, it's important for us to stay uh, on top of these. And it's a full-time job just doing that alone. So yeah, question for you. Um, on your comp plan, you also include law enforcement. Are you are you able to communicate with law enforcement on a wildland fire? If they have VHF, yes. If they have VHF. 
And if they don't have VHF, the tendency has been to uh, utilize or actually just give them one of our radios. And that uh, we can uh, talk about uh, what's available to us as far as resources in a few minutes. But that's a, essentially what it is. So currently you're not bridging frequencies with, for example, the state assets? No, no. We're just a strictly a VHF radio network. All of our wall and fire, fire players are uh, VHF as well. Thank you. Um, so, uh, and in document control, as soon as we issue a 217, we'll put a, a booklet out. Uh, for example, the 2013 Southwest Area Wall and Fire Frequency Interoperability Guide. Uh, as soon as we printed that, uh, <laughs> we had to change it. And we found that people are referencing old documents. So documents control is very, very important for us. And we, we're still challenged with that, uh, but we're uh, progressing as, as best can be. So, but to answer your question, <laughs> we rely heavily on errors. And errors, uh, although we haven't um, utilized it to its fullest extent uh, over the last few years, uh, but we look forward to it. And we realize that it's a valuable tool out there for us. And, and we, um, in, instead of handing that, that law enforcement officer, that VHF radio, this is a panel, uh, obviously, you guys know about errors. So. But it is a, uh, uh, a extremely valuable asset. So thank you to for uh, anybody and everybody who had um, from the initial stages of errors and planning that uh, to uh, to its, uh, its system as it is now. It's a great, great, great tool. Um, the other asset uh, is is just the uh, National Interoperability Field Operations Guide, the NIPOG. Uh, we refer to that on a, on a daily basis. It has a lot of great information. In it. Um, but ARES is just a fantastic network, and um, that provides provides what we need. So, uh, although it's not ideal, um, and and we and we've had this strategy for a number of years, where we have interagency fires, we just order caches. We have multiple major caches available to us whether it's in a repeater format or a portable radio format, um, we order these caches and we just give the, uh, the users our portable radios. And it's an, an older system, it's an older way of thinking, but it works for us right now. And with errors, it seems to be, you know, that's, that's what we, uh, we rely on. Uh, and if nobody's ever seen this, uh, Radio Support Cache User's Guide, uh, it's, a, it's a great tool. It's available on the internet um, by that uh, web address right there. Uh, it contains a lot of good information. Um, it has pre-planned charts. On the lower left-hand corner is, a, is a, an example of how it would be utilized to use in various uh, repeater kits, UHF. Well, you probably use UHF uh, as link kits, um, but uh, we have a command VH, all of the, the Command tactical repeaters, uh, repeater kits are VHF. And of course, we have aircraft. Uh, we, since we utilize a lot of aviation assets, that is uh, another critter in itself. So, what some of the uh, challenges that we see in the uh, that we continue to, uh, to to battle is for a number of years. Uh, every every emergency responder, uh, wildland emergency responder, would go to B Fire 21 on regional aid, and obviously we you know when we have multiple incidents across the entire state of Arizona, all at one time, uh, that <laughs> becomes taxing, and uh, so it's kind of a challenge to get the, uh, to to develop a new train of thought with emergency first responders that hey those B tacks are out there, and there's also our uh, you know our state agency. Uh, tactical frequencies. So we have a, a number of uh, resources. It's just a, we have old habits, and we're trying to get out of old, old habits. B Fire 21 for uh, emergency uh, uh, air ambulance uh, transports. You know uh, that hasn't changed. Helicopters are still showing up and being dispatched on mutual aid. And uh, so hopefully through uh, through education um, and outreach, we can convince emergency response responders that there are uh, uh, other assets out there available other than mutual aid, other than everybody being on mutual aid. Uh, because we utilize aviation, um, and the last thing that we want uh, is to uh, is to take 
a uh, aircraft, uh, uh, lead plane or uh, air attack aircraft, kind of like the air, air traffic controller in the sky, is to get him with that, you know, about 10,000 feet or 8,000 feet AGL and get him on VHF frequencies uh, that the ground are operating on so everybody can imagine what would happen if we did that. Um, there are occasions where, where that does happen, um, but we, we then, uh, and we have pre-planned uh, air-to-ground frequencies. These are VHF uh, neuroband frequencies. And so these are defined within Arizona and New Mexico. That's kind of our region. Uh, it's kind of a, um, a geographical region for most of our wildland uh, uh, emergency federal partners. But, um, but air-to-ground frequencies are, it's another education process. We need to get that information now. Emergency first responders, make sure that they have that in their radios. Because if they don't have it in their radios, then everybody navigates back to, you know, what future late, right? <laughs> so uh, that's, that's something we're still trying to work on, uh, is uh, we need to recognize the need that, uh, that everybody needs to have capability to have some sort of programmable type of, uh, of radio, or at least have the radios pre-planned in um, before fire seems to start off. Yes, sir. This is Mike Worrell. You said you coordinate with the National Guard. Do you coordinate those air to ground frequencies in the VHF band every year with them? Uh, no, those are those are federally assigned uh, frequencies, and so those are coordinated by the National Interagency Incident Communications Division, at Boise, Idaho. So those are federal federal frequencies, and uh, by virtue of radio frequency authorizations, you know you can do a lot of pre planning. That uh, you can get those um, you know programmed in your radio as long as you have the authorization. To do so. So uh, the take-home message on the air-to-ground frequencies is there is a uh, there is a website um, and this information is available uh, at the uh, U.S. Forest Service website. I don't have that website handy, uh, but uh, if you just Google um, Southwest uh, Communications or Southwest Aircraft uh, air-to-ground frequencies, it will come up under uh, the uh, Southwest Coordination Center. Um, so anyway, the take-home message is that uh, uh, we need to have emergency first responders need to have those air ground frequencies to keep the aircraft out of the regular tactical frequencies. And of course, the other one is uh, air-to-air frequencies. Just be aware that there is a whole mess of other, and those are uh, coordinated and issued by the uh, FAA, not the FCC, but the FAA. So we have a, a lot of work there, and those are things that are done on a national level, and they're assigned it, uh, appropriately between, um, uh, there are not a lot of them, <laughs> and uh, they give a block to um, the uh, National Inter Interagency Incident Communications Division. They just give them a block, a block of them, and it's up to the uh, NICCD to distribute those as needed. So, um, but anyway, this is kind of an awareness thing. Uh, we wouldn't want ground, uh, in, in ground personnel on the air to air frequencies, but it's just a, another one of those things, another group of hoops that we have to come through. Any comments, questions, suggestions? No, thank you very much. Thanks very much.